All right. So um, yesterday we we saw web server, right? How um we could how we could actually um create set up a web server and run a web application on the web server. All right, great. So uh, we also saw how we try and um, um, set up um, um, a domain name, right? We, we give the application a server name uh, with, um, with the help of Route 53. Route 53. And we were able to access the application externally with a name instead of uh, an IP address. So let me check the location where we have that guy, the D, then e-commerce, right? So this is our what? This is a server name. So if I launch, okay, it's, it's, it's down because the service is down. Take note, guys, the service is down, the Apache service. So if I say system CTL status HTTPD, sorry, you can see it is loaded, but it's not started. So I can start it by saying restart and check the status, the status is up. Then if I try to refresh, try and refresh, reload, reload, active, get started now. Restart. Why is it not starting? Okay, what could? Wait, why is it not starting? Web server. One second, guys. Copy. Did I delete anything? It should start. Ecom. All right, let me check. Let me check the domain name. Ecom. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Toby. So the IP has changed. Remember, guys, thank you for that pointer. Thank you for the pointer. So this IP address has changed from what we had on Route 53. So if I go to Route 53 now, I go to Route 3, I go to hosted zones. All right. So these are small, small troubleshooting. I go to the hosted zone and I check for ecom. I go check for ecom. All right. Yes, ecom. They can see this IP has changed. So all I need to do, I just need to edit my record. Edit the record and replace that the new IP with um with the old one all right this is the new ip all right then save so once i save i think our website should be up refresh refresh it takes some time it takes some time to propagate so let's uh, monitor it so view status should be active the status is pending right once it goes from pending to active Think we shall we can now access the website 
So um, the DNS record takes some time. It's in sync. You are seeing the you are seeing the different phases from from pending to in sync. Then I think you should go to active. So let me check now. Now that it's in active, all right, it's still it's still there. Sorry, in, in sync. You should go to active. So it's only. Should come up. All right, let's allow it to, to come up. It will definitely come up. So that was just um, the challenge. That was the IP. All right. So great. So now today, let's. I'll come to um. SSL a bit. All right. Um, okay, before open SSL, open SSL, open SSL. All right. Let me just show us briefly. Let me show us before I go into um Node.js and um and sorry, one second. There's a better. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. This this is the concept I should work with. All right. So now, uh, before I let me just touch this open SSL. Then once I touch this open SSL, then I will talk about deploying JavaScript framework, JavaScript framework like Node.js, um, Angular JS, and um, React JS. So we'll look at how we can deploy those set of um, technologies, right? So without further ado, let's look at into Open SSL. Now, before I talk about Open SSL, before I talk about, you can see, it's now up. It took some time to propagate. So if you check here now, this should change from in sync. Should have changed to active. All right, but that's fine, Sha. That's fine. In as much as our site is up and running. So now, we want to see how we can use a self-signed certificate. I just want to show us so you have an idea. It's not that um, you will need it in production. No, you don't need it because a self-signed certificate is not secured, right? It's not secured, okay? So so you, you can never use it. So what we will use is what is a wildcard certificate. And a wildcard certificate, you're going to get a free one from Let's Encrypt, all right? Let's Encrypt. So let's talk, play around with what OpenSSL. But before we play with OpenSSL, I want to first of all, uh, talk us through, um, I'm through with this guy. Talk us through with what we call um, TLS, SSL, Handshake. TLS, TLS, SSL, handshake. One second, guys. Where are you? All right, guys, TLS, SSL, Handshake. Now, if you remember, if you remember uh, when we were talking about um, networking, something around networking, 
I don't know if someone still remember. We talked about TCP three-way handshake. Three-way handshake. Please remind me if I did discuss this guy. Remind me, remind me, remind me. No time. Remind me. Remind me. Did we? We talked about it. Yes, we did. Correct. Correct. Now, we talked about three-way, CP three-way handshake, right? We said before um, that every protocol, all right, every TCP protocol must go through the three-way handshake before communication can be established. Before communication can be established, all right? Great. So let me keep this guy somewhere here. Now, this three-way handshake is giving us, we're also having something similar in TLS SSL. So in TLS SSL, this is what we have. Uh, let me call this side, let me call this side, um, that one call it a client, okay? And then this other side, let me call it a server. Client and server, make it more smaller. Okay. All right. So let me give it something else. Maybe. All right. Then, um, watch you. All right, because um, sometimes, sometimes you could be asked this in an interview. Can you explain um, TLS SSL handshake? All right, TLS SSL handshake. Now, before this stage, uh, let me let me copy out this thing. Before there's this stage, and um, there is there is this stage. All right. Now we have a TCP three-way handshake. So in your TCP three-way handshake, first. The client sends a what? An acknowledge a what? A sync packet. Telling what? Telling the server, CEO, I would love us to what? To communicate. The server is going to respond with, it's going to acknowledge, and it's also it, it will also want to want to sync with what? With the clients. Then finally, then finally, the clients would now what send an acknowledgement, an acknowledgement towards to the server, saying that yes, we can actually what communicate. So now in the TLS SSL handshake, all right, the client and server will first of all go through what we call the TCP three-way handshake. Once this stage has been accomplished, then they will now what trying to what, establish a TLS, they will, they will now try to go through a TLS SSL handshake. Now, what happens there is the client sends an hello message. The client sends an hello message. The server is going to respond. 
Stacey, I did receive your hello message. It's going to confirm that hello message. Um, one second, guys. All right, I'm back. Okay. Um let me let me let me let me let me look up let me look up on Google. Let me show something. TLS SSL handshake. All right. So let me let me look for an image so that will explain it properly to our understanding. All right. Okay, better. Let me use uh let me use this guy. Let me use this guy. Copy image. Why now? Why, 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 why? Copy image. Okay, now let me illustrate that here. Now, after the three-way handshake, sync, sync and acknowledge, connection is now established, right? Now the client is gonna send a client hello, a message, all right, to the server. Now the server is going to respond with a server hello. So here's a client hello, and here is a server hello. It's gonna to respond to the server hello. That I, yes, I saw your 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 hello message. Now this client hello message contains the SSL protocol version, the session ID, the list of cipher suites. Then these client hello extensions. That is what is contained in what the client hello. All right. Now, the server will, re will receive it. Now, the server will respond. The server, when the server responds, the server is going to respond with, with its own, with same SSL version, the session ID, the selected cipher, server certificate. So the server is responding with the, with the hello message, all right? So the server contains the server, the hello message of the server, contains what? The server certificate, as well as the server hello extensions. Now, it will send it what? To the client side. Now, they've, they've exchanged hello messages. They've exchanged pleasantries. We will call it pleasantries. It's like when you're, you're, when you're walking on the way, you say, hello, and the guy will respond, hello. So you guys have, have exchanged words, pleasantries. Now, your hello, your hello identifies you, that identifies your name, your locality, where you're from, your status. And the other person that you say hello to also have these, um, these, um, these features, okay? That's what is happening here. Now, the client pre-master secrets. Um, um, Wait, let me look at all the authors. Let me look at that part. Let me put it properly. This guy has said pre-master secrets. Let me look at something more. Um, there's a technical term that is being called. Um, let me check here. Client key exchange. All right. All right. Um, which, let me see.
One second, guys. One second. Um, the client key exchange. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. Client key exchange and great. Now, let's come over here. Let me copy this part. Copy image. Now the client is going to is going to send its key exchange. All right, it's going to send the key exchange client cipher to to the server. All right, so the client key the, the client cipher. Let's put it this way. Client cipher. All right. So the client is going to send um, a key exchange. So these the client cipher. It also has the client key exchange. Exchange. I will put it. Exchange. Uh, client key exchange. Client key. Key exchange plus key exchange. This is combined, all right? This is combined. The server will do the same thing, all right? The server is going to respond. Let's paste this guy. The server is going to respond with server cipher plus key exchange. The ones they've exchanged their keys, they've exchanged their keys. The client sends its own key to the server side. The server sends its own key to the client side. Then the client is going to send another message called client finish. Client finish, then the server in turn is going to send another message called server finish. Server finish, then these two can now start communicating. They can now start exchanging encrypted messages. Now, the process, the idea of this thing is to create trust. The idea behind TLS SSL handshake is to create trust between the client's machine and the server machine. So you'll be, you'll be asked, what is the idea behind TLS SSL handshake? So if in either of this process, when the client sends a client hello, the server does not respond, then a trust can never be, be, be established. The client will never share his cipher with what with, with the server because he's expecting a server hello. There must be a server hello from the server. Then the client will now ex start doing what key exchange. At this level, what happens is key exchange, client cipher plus what key exchange. Okay, once that has been established, 
the server will do the same thing. It's going to exchange its own keys too with the client. Then once client has gotten the key, the client is going to send a client finish. I don't have anything to send anymore. I'm done. I have confirmed. Then the server will also send what a server finish. Then the client and the server will start exchanging encrypted messages. We now start exchanging messages. Because what? Trust. Trust has been established. Because trust Because trust has been what established. So this whole thing is what we want to what we want to we want to demonstrate with what with SSL with open SSL. All right. Before we go ahead, is there any question, guys? So this whole thing that we we'll see is what. We uh we want to demonstrate with certificate management. All right. So now without further ado, let's get cracking. Let's get cracking. Okay. So now open SSL. Open SSL is a utility. Open SSL is a Utility, utility for managing, for creating and managing certificates and keys. Certificates and keys, all right? That's what this guy is used for, okay? So we want to see how we can um, create keys, create certificates, all right? And use that key and certificates um, in, on our web server, all right? On our web server. But take notes, all right? Take notes. Any certificate that we are going to be creating out of OpenSSL is going to be a self-signed certificate. A self-signed certificate. Now, there's a technical term called certificate authority. CA. Certificate authority. All right, let me keep it somewhere. Self-sign. Now, a certificate authority is... is is, is an entity that is responsible for issuing certificates. A CA is an entity that is responsible for issuing digital, digital certificates. That's a certificate authority. And and uh, we have a lot of global certificate authorities. What is this rubbish? There are a lot of global, global certificate author of authorities all right we have people like a uh, digisat you hear something like digisat we have a um, very very zone we have um um uh, toby remind me of uh, is it go that does go daddy no komodo. komodo thank you we have komodo komodo still remember of anyone we have um there are a lot we have from AWS. Now the cloud the cloud providers 
they are now also what, acting as certificate authority. All right, we have the one from AWS, AWS Certificate Manager, Certificate Manager. All right, then, all right, there are so many guys, there are so many, right? So these guys, you can actually go to these guys to buy certificates. Certificates you could use with your domain. Certificates you could use with your what? With your domain, all right? However, these guys are not free. They're not free, okay? They're not free. Now, the only free one we have now is less encrypt. Free CA, all right? Free CA, less encrypt. Less encrypt. So if we shall see less encrypt in action, all right? So these guys are not free. However, we shall also want to see, before we go into this less encrypt, we shall see a self-signed certificate we can see how we can generate our own certificates locally and use it but the self-signed certificate is not secured i come again a self-signed certificate is not secured and should never never ever be used in production a self-signed certificate is not secured and should never ever be used in what production never ever all right it's just for it's just for it's just for educational purpose all right all right so let's get started now so i'll just i'll be leveraging on some um, online resources all right so i'll come over here I will now say how to set up. Guys, watch my process. Watch my process, all right? Because what makes you a, what makes you better over the other person is your ability to search for information, all right? I, I could have, I could have just, okay, uh, let me be doing these things from, Maybe from a written something, something I've jotted down, right? But no, I'm, I just want to be real. So that, because this, these are things you'll be doing in, in your workplace. These are things you'll be doing on a daily basis. You'll be doing researches. You'll be doing a lot of goggling. And if you're not taught the act of goggling, when that time comes, once you see a request, the first thing you want to do, you want to contact Frank. Or you want to contact your your colleague? No, you first of all do your own research. See how you can resolve that issue. If you've tried, you can't resolve it. Then you can now fall onto your connect your network of resources that you have. All right. So I'm also showing us the way of googling for resources. All right. Now. I want to show us how to set up how to set up a self a self signed how to create a self signed certificate all right in centos in centos okay for for apache all right for because I want to use that certificate I want to use it for my Apache web server. Now, we have this first link, Phoenix Snap. Let me open this link. Open it. Come over here. Uh, let me scroll. Let me see what they did here. How to get an open SSL certificate, uh, self-signed, install SSL. Now, this is what they did. You say, yum install. You first of all install uh, this SAT bot, or this less encrypt. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me keep this part. I shall come back to this part. Okay, very great. Okay, great, 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 great. I'll come back to this part. I will come back. Uh, with this is with Komodo. This is with Komodo. Um. Okay, and the virtual host. Okay, so this is this part I want to see. Great, everything is here. Everything that I need is here. Is here, guys. All right. All right. All right. 
All right. Uh, let me see other things. Now, how to create a self-signed certificate. All right. Now, the first thing is you install a module. There's a module called mode underscore SSL. All right. This is for Red Hat flavors. I've not gone the route of Ubuntu. I've gone the route of Red Hat flavor in the likes of Amazon Linux, Fedora, CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Scientific Linux, etc., etc. Now, after installing this guy, they say we should create a directory to store the private key under this part. You can create anywhere, but they said this part, let's follow their path. Then change the ownership to restrict the access. Okay. Then generate a self signed certificate using this open SSL command. All right. So uh, they've done everything at a go, but I want to show us bit by bit. This command is supposed to be the third level. Right, it's supposed to be the third level of command, right? But um, I'm going to show us bit by bit. I'll come back to this link. I will definitely come back to this link. Let me keep it. Let me open something else. Um, let me open this. Let me open this. Self signed. Install. Creating a new certificate. No, they are just going direct. You you will not you will not you will not enjoy it. They are going direct. Let me still leave this guy as well. I will need it. A self signed certificate. I think I have it somewhere open now. I have it somewhere open. Oh. Ah. Tech means. Why are they just updating everything like this? Uh huh. No, no, guys. Uh. Mm. But let me change it. How to create um how to create self certificates with uh with open SSL. Um all right, let me go this route. Let me check this. Okay, great, guys. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Now, this is what I wanted to show us. Uh, because we need to take it step by step. Because you look at this command. This command is creating everything. It's, you can actually um, create the certificate, the key, and the certificate signing request at once. So there's a one command you can use to create everything at once. But if I should do like that, you won't, you won't, you won't feel you, you won't, uh, you won't feel, you won't feel it, right? So I want us to feel it. So for that, I will start it from the very beginning by creating a private key. First, we are going to create a private key, and after creating a private key, we are going to create a signing request, a certificate signing request, a CSR, a CSR. Because why I'm, why I'm going this route is that if in the future you are opportune to work with an organization and in that position you are asked to buy a wild card certificate, to buy a wild card certificate, in that situation, all right, the, if, you, if you go to Komodo or DigiSat, or either of the CAs of the certificate authorities, those guys will request for this file, CSR. They're going to request for this file, this certificate signing request, because they need this file to create a wildcard certificate for your organization. So if you don't know how to generate this file, 
then it's going to be an issue for you tomorrow. So that's why I needed us to take it from the cradle, from the basics, all right? From the basics. It's not difficult to just run one command and to just create everything and start using it. Doesn't make sense, man. Doesn't make sense. In as much as we need, want us to have an understanding of what we are doing, right? So for that, we're going to start from the very beginning. The very beginning says, I'm going to use OpenSSL to generate a key. And I'll call that key server.key. So let's come over here. Now, great, sudo dash i. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to go into EDC SSL, this directory, all right? Now, under this directory, I'm going to create a directory. Let me call it uh, my SATs, all right? Uh, MKDR, my SATs, all right? I'm going to go into my SATs, PWD. So inside this of this location, I'm going to create my, my server key, which is my private key, my certificate signing request, and my certificates. Now let's look at the commands one after the other. So first is my what? Is my server private key. So here's the command. By default, every, every uh, what's it called? Every, um, every Linux machine comes pre-installed OpenSSL. Comes with OpenSSL pre-installed, all right? So, but if it's not there, all you need to do is just to say a yum install open SSL to tell us that open SSL of this version is already what installed, right? Nothing to do. Great. Now let's get started. So open SSL generates RSA. So RSA is the algorithm. Uh, that name looks like a, a Greek name, um, RSA. RSA mini, RSA algorithm, sorry, RSA, RSA mini. There's one, there's one name. Let me check. Rebo, uh -huh, Rivest, something, something. That's, that's something somewhere. Rivest, 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 Shami, Alduman, encryption. C O R S A. Right, that's the meaning of RSA. Right, vs. Shami Idoman. Type of public key encryption widely used for data encryption of email and other digital transactions over the internet. RSA is named for its invent its inventors, Ronald Ronald L. Rivest Adi Shami Shami. Right, mostly in Abemina area. Adi Shami Adi Shami. Right, and Leonard M. I do man, right? So it was actually named from the inventors, right? They were it's coined from their names. So you, you now know what RSA is. Let's 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 move on, guys. Let's move on. No time. Let's move on. Great. So now generate RSA. Then I'm going to output a server key. It can be any name, you can call it private.key or anything or key, but it's always it makes sense. You give it what? A, a an understanding name, right? A meaningful name. So I call it server dot what dot key. That key. Now this twenty forty eight is the level of encryption. I can start with ten twenty four. It starts from ten twenty four. You can increase it towards twenty forty eight. Uh huh. You can increase it to to um to twenty again. Um nine eight. Um, 40, 40, waiting, 40, 40, 40, 96, 40, 96. So you increase it by a power of two, or a, a multiple, sorry, a multiple of two, a multiple of two, right? Multiple of two, that's how the, the, the level of encryption increases. So I'm, I'm going to stick with what, 2048, 2048. Now hit enter. Oh, sorry. It will. Why am I thinking they drop like this now? So I'll change to S E T C S S L my SAT. So under here, I'll say what? Open SSL generate RSA. Then I'm going to output my what? Server.key. 
then with this bit encryption 2048. So once I hit enter, if I check, I already have what my server.key. Now let's check the content of what my server.key. You can see here's my what private key. It's telling me that it's the end of what the private key. So this is the content of what private key. Everything here is what is encrypted. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do now, we need to create a certificate signing request. Now a certificate signing request is used for signing the certificate. That's as the name implies. We will create a, a CSR file to have all the information. Okay, that's they are using a file. So I, I, I don't want to use a file. I want to take us back to the basics, right? I want to generate this CSR file itself. Now here is the command to generate that file. So I'll say open SSL request. Request a new key. A request request a new CSR a new from key so from key server we've already created a key so i will be using this key all right this key to generate a certificate signing request take note guys i'll be using this key that i created to generate the what a certificate signing request all right great then um i'm going to output server.csr that's all, guys. Server.csr. So once I hit enter, it's going to give me some prompts. It's going to come up with some, some prompts. If I hit enter, now look at now. You are about to be asked to enter information that will be incorporated into your certificate request. What you are about to enter is what is called a distinguished name or a DN. There are quite a few fields, but you can leave some blank. For some fields, there will be a default value. If you enter a dot, the field will be left blank. So let's get started. Now we start with what, a country name. A country name is always with a two-letter code, right? Two-letter code. So for Nigeria, we have it as what? NG. That's our uh, the two-letter code for Nigeria, NG. I will hit enter. The state or province. My state is Lagos. Locality, which is city, can say Maryland. Organization name, all right? Organization name, I can say, organization name, I can say, um, I can say, I can say, um, UBA, UBA, UBA PLC, UBA PLC, enter. Organizational units, I can say risk, all right? Risk and auditing, enter. Now, common name, your name or your server's host name. So the name of my server, uh, your name or your server host name, I could pick this guy. This is my whatever, I can call it Ecom. Let me just put it here. I will say Ecom, all right? Ecom. Then my email address, I can just put frankiesinfotech at yahoo.com, enter. Um, do I need any challenge password? No, I can just press enter, empty. Press enter. An additional company name. Just keep it simple. No. That's all, guys. That file has been generated. Now let's check. So you can see, and I have a word, two files, dot CSR. So this is my word certificate signing request. Now let's check the contents of that certificate signing request. So you can see beginning of a certificate request and end of certificate request. This file contains everything I have put in there. Now after I have generated these two files, my server.key and my server.csr, I'll use those, those two files to generate my certificate, gong gong, the certificate I will need. I'm gonna scroll. Now I wanna generate that certificate. I generate SSL certificates with self-signed certificate authority. Now with my key and my whatever with my csr i can generate a what a certificate that i will use on my website so this will be its main certificate that i will use now let's look at the command now the command is this guy so it's now let's copy do i need to copy let me keep it somewhere here so let's bring out our terminal so same thing oh why is the oh each time i connect to my 
my router, that's what I get. I always have connections timing out. Connections timing out. Let me, one sec, guys. I'll connect, let's just finish here. So now I'll now say what's open SSL. X509, X509 is a certificate standard. Let's check, guys. Let's check what is X509. Go, go. X509, X509 certificate. So X509 certificate binds an identity to a public key using a digital signature. It's an international telecommunication union standard. It's a standard defining the format of public key certificates. This is your definition, guys. It is a standard used for defining the format of public key certificates. Anything that has to do with public key certificates, you use the standard. It's a very common standard, X509, right? You always be asked, can be asked, you know? X509, know that it's a standard for signing public certificates, public key certificates, all right? Take note, guys. Take note. Let's go there. Now, let's start. This did not terminate. Uh, one second, guys. Let me just switch. I want to switch now. Let me switch. Let me switch. All right. Can you see my screen, guys? Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes. All right. All right. Great. Now, uh, let's go there. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Exchange directory, etc, SSL, SSL, my SAT, my SAT. Okay. Now say, open SSL, X, 509 request i'm requesting for a certificate now request for a certificate i'm going to impute my waiting my server dot certificate signing request all right then 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 um there's no if i'm using a ca i'm not using a ca but let me try this thing if it will fly ca root ca.crt i don't have these files uh let me see uh ca key ca key is root oh, oh, oh no 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 i'm not using a certificate no no need for this guy all right so uh let me go a different route so i'm going to output in i'm going to output in um um uh, output server.crt which is the main certificate then the validity, all right, the validity of the certificate we're gonna, is going to be one year, 365 days, right? That's what this guy means. Then the the hashing, I'm going to use a hashing of uh, SHA-256. SHA it's a salting. I'm salting that certificate. 256, then, yeah. So let me see this guy will fly. The only fly, I'll look for another command. Open SSL with this standard. I'm requesting for a certificate, all right? And I'm imputing my signing request, my certificate signing request, right? I'm using this guy to generate a certificate. I'm going to output a certificate. And this certificate is going to have a validity of what? 365 days. And this certificate, I'm going to be hashing it. So by hashing it, I'm, 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 I'm applying a double layer of encryption. Why I'm why I am encrypting with OpenSSL? I'm also what sorting this guy. I'm changing. I'm changing the pattern. All right, with what with a hash. All right, with a hash. So let's see what happens. Enter. I'm having an error. Let request signed. Okay, subject. Now you can see now he's using that guy. Subject. Common names: NG. State is Lagos. Uh, locality is Maryland, company is UBA, blah, 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 blah. We need a private key to sign with. Use key or this, or this, 
all right as a private key now i need to include that part now so that's i have to include it somewhere here i will include somewhere here dash c a key c a key is my server dot key so this is so the command say it needs that part so if i hit enter what was it saying zero content unable to write certificates uh let me see something let me let me let me see let me let me remove that guy let me remove that crt remove it let's generate it again i'm having error somewhere i'm going to write certificate i'm going to write certificates let me remove it again remove it um clean all right let me follow this guy um Open this Excel and I request in outputs in this data, then CA key. My CA key is server dot key. Uh huh. Okay. CA dash CA create serial. Create serial. I've not seen this option before. Create serial. Um okay, let me try. Putin Pam. I'm able to write certificates. Uh, why am I having this error? It's creating it too, but all right, okay. Ignoring this guy option since CA option is not given. Okay, CA option. Okay. But even if I do like this, if I do like this, it will tell me that that file is not available. If I use a CA option, dash CA, root CA dot CRT. All right, I wanna have, but not open file, right? So that's the error we're getting. So we don't need it. I don't need that file. So let me let me just do it this the simple way. I don't need that file, but I should need uh my my key. I should need my key. I should need my CA key. I'm not using CA self, so let me just remove that CA. Let me just say key. Let me just say key. Yeah, simple. All right. So guys, that's it. So this is the command you use. All right, forget about all those um, CA because I'm not using CA concept. I'm not, I'm not using certificate authority concept. All right, so in certificate authority, you will have these files, right, from somewhere is generated as well. So now I have my certificate. Then I can say server.crt. So here's my word certificate. Go on, go on. So I'll be using, I'll be needing the certificate and the key for my web server so one thing is by generating the key so so far we have successfully generated a self-signed certificate now in as much as we have generated a self-signed certificate we need to use this certificate right this is the certificate and the key so let's see how to use it uh, which was um one of these links that i opened all right one of these links that i opened so this is what they did here right so there's a file called ssl.conf. Guys, watch it. Now, step three, installing the local SSL signed SSL certificate on Apache. All right. So um, we want to install this certificate on Apache. All right. Now, ensure that you have the following lines between the virtual host tag, uh, which, all right. So um, so you see, open and edit this file, all right? So let's go there and see that file. Let's go there. So I'll come over here. I'll say vim etc httpd conf dot d then ssl. All right, I don't have that file. There's no file, but we can create it. Let's create it. Ssl dot conf. But before then. Uh, let me check something. Okay, that's all right. Now we'll create that file, sslworlds.conf. I have opened that file. It has to be sslworlds.conf. 
Now I'll copy this virtual host. Copy. Copy. It's the same way you would do if you 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 had bought if you had bought an SSL a wildcard certificate from Komodo, VeriSign, VeriZone, DigiSat, etc. It's the same method you will use to install it. All right. So let me paste it. Now my server name, my server name is going to be this e-commerce. Copy. That's my server name. So put it somewhere here, paste it. That's my server name. That's my server name. Um, server admin, I don't need this. It doesn't make, can't leave it. Then virtual host, sorry. Now remember on our old virtual host, let me go back to that virtual host. It's somewhere, uh, let me cut it, etc httpd conf.d then e-commerce something you can see uh our virtual host we are pointing towards port 80 all right now on this guy since it is ssl we are pointing to port 443 which is https a secured version of what uh of http all right so uh this guy can remove that server name server alias you don't need it you can just then my document root. So I have to point my document root to what I have here. So my document root is this guy, var www e commerce. So copy it. So copy it. I've copied it. Let's go. So my document root is that guy. Paste it. Great. Great. Now I need to put on SSL engine. All right. SSL engine on. Then I need to specify the path to my certificate file and the path to my certificate key. So my certificate file will be .crt. Then my key will be what .key. Now let's go there and check something. Now look at my location. My certificates are in this location. etc SSL my SAT. I have both my CRT and my key here. So all I need to do, I'll just copy this guy, copy, right click, copy. Then let me go into that file one more time, all right? Then my certificate file is going to be slash, slash, server.crt. Take note guys, take note to remove this one because you have to point the location of your certificate and key. I will do similar thing here. I will paste that guy slash server dot key. So guys, we are all set. I'm going to escape. I will save and quit. Now the next step says what? Let's check. The next step says you've. I have installed it. So this is for nginx, right? Um, install the legal authority in your browser. All right, that's all. Now let's restart Apache service. Now, now say what? System CTL restart HTTPD. All right? So if everything goes well, now there's so, there's a problem somewhere. There's a problem because uh, there's a problem somewhere. Let's go back to that file again. Let's go back to this file because it's not starting. Apache is not starting. Why is this problem? Why is this problem? Wait, let me check. ETC, HTTPD. Um, there's an SSL file. Let me go to conf. It's not there. It's not there. Oh, I need to install a module. Uh, mode underscore SSL. So sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry. My bad. My bad. Um, cd into conf.d. Now look at it. This file is supposed to be automatically generated. See this SSL, SSL.conf. It is supposed to be what? Automatically generated. But I have manually created this file, which doesn't make sense. So I'm going to back it up. Move SSL to SSL.backup. 
So I have renamed this file. So what I will do, I will install a model. That model is mode underscore SSL. So that model is going to create this file, SSL.com. So I'll say yum, yum install mode underscore SSL. All right, so I'll say yes. Take note guys, take note please. So this is the module for SSL. So now let's check now, you can see this file has been generated. You can see the file has been generated. Now let's see the content of that file, ssl.conf. You can see a whole lot. You can see it listings on this guy. And um, this is the file you're supposed to edit. This is the file you're supposed to edit and not that virtual host. You can still do the virtual host, but um, let's see something. So I'll scroll down. All right, so here's the virtual host part. So default is this. Um, now here's the SSL engine is on. Then uh, there are a few things we need to change. The certificate key. Now this is SSL certificate file. We need to change this guy. Then we need to change this guy, All right? So these are the two, uh, the two lines we need to change in this file. We need to change line 101 and 109. Take note guys, because you need to install mode underscore SSL to generate this file for you, all right? So um, the path to that is, uh, let me go out. Uh, let me go out. So the path is etc SSL. No, is he here? Where was that guy? That guy was doing. Um. Okay, SSL my SATs. Okay, etc SSL my SATs. Correct. Okay, my SATs. So copy this guy. Copy it. Copy it. Copy. Now let's go into that file. All right. So yeah, I'm going to replace my certificate file. You can copy it. You can copy, and then um, you. Comment out that guy, then you paste your guy. Server.crt. Delete this one. All right. Then do the same thing here. Um, yank and paste. Then comment out this guy and do the same thing server.key so now i'll escape that's all guys that's all i'll escape save and quit we are all through them you don't need to touch anything here because if you do you keep having error you have to know how to do it right save and quit now let's restart apache service so system CTL restart HTTPD. So with this, everything is now fine. So if I go to my browser, see you. If I refresh, it's not picking effect. So I have to make it pick effects. So currently it's it is running on um, HTTP. So I'm going to put HTTPS column slash slash. So I want to serve this my website on HTTPS. You can see now. Is now what is now touching my port 443. It's now saying that this guy is not secure. Yes, it's not secure because it's a self-signed certificate. Now it's saying go back to safety or I should continue. Click on advance, click on proceed towards my website. So click on this guy. So once I click on this guy, I'm going to have for oh, why is it taking me back to this slide? Where's my e-commerce now? Why, 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 why? Okay, okay. My document roots, guys. Where is it? No, 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 no. It's not about a new browser. It's by default, it's pointing to slash var slash www slash html. All right. Remember that our document root is on slash var slash www slash e-commerce. All right. So let me open that file one more time. This file. Let me look for that path document roots let me search documents you can see by default it is pointing to this guy 
is pointing to this guy by default. But now I don't want to use that path. I want to use a different path. Guys, watch, oh, watch, take notes. Now, my document route is on slash var www e-commerce. E-commerce. That's my document route. So copy this guy. Copy it. Copy. Go into the file. All right. Now search for documents. There you are. So I'm going to yank it and I'm going to remove the parts. Now I'm going to use the part that I want. This is what I want and not the default. So this my part is going to override the default. All right. We are good, guys. We are good. Escape. Um, escape, save and quit. Now let's restart the service. Restart the service. Restart the service. Good. Now let me come here. Let me refresh. Refresh. So you can see, guys, I'm now getting the real website. I'm now getting my real website. This is web server management. I'm getting my real website. And these are things you'll be doing in production. Now let's check if I'm going to have those details. I'll come over here. This, I'm supposed to have a padlock here, but because of the self-signed certificate, I can't have a padlock here, all right? But I will get those, those values. Let me check. Those things are coming. I'll come here. It's saying that this, this certificate is not valid. Uh, let me go to site settings. And uh, no, I don't need site settings. Let me check the certificates. Certificate is not valid. Let's check. You can see those things that we, we are imputing, those details. This certificate is issued to common name, ecom, organization, UBA PLC, organizational units, risks and auditing. Risks and auditing, uh, blah, blah, blah. It was issued today, October 7th by 6 12. So this is the information of that certificate. And this is that um, hashing. Uh, SHA-256 fingerprint. You can see, right? This is fingerprint, right? The details, right? So this is the beauty of OpenSSL, guys. All right? This is the beauty of everything. At this juncture, guys, any question, please? So we have seen how to generate uh, a self-signed certificate, all right? And how to use, how to install the self-signed certificate. So let me, I'll share this link with you guys. Let me share it at once. All right. Okay. So I've I've shared that. Um yeah. So yes, guys. So that is it. So let's in that same energy, in that same energy, let's all uh, let us wrap up anything certificate with um certificates uh, with less encrypt right after less encrypt where is that curriculum i was using after less encrypt uh curriculum it is okay now be this let me this no 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 ah which curriculum it is now uh -huh, now be this so after less encrypt we shall now look into what JavaScript framework, right? So to wrap this guy up, let's look at let's encrypt. Then there's a, there was this uh, link I opened that talked about let's encrypt. Let me check at the top, top of it, top of it, not this one. Close it, close it. I'll share this guy with you also already. Uh, let me check, close this guy. Is it this one? Not this one. I think it's this first one. Great, is this first one? So now let's look at let's encrypt. Um, let me start. Start bots. 
installed SSL certificates with what Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a free, open, and automated certificate authority. It uses the SatBot software tool to administer certificates automatically. All right. Uh, Onuche, there. All right, no, there. Okay. Now, SatBot is a highly automated tool. Make sure that I'll give you this link for you to read. Let me share that link with you guys for you to read. Um, this is SatBot. This is less encrypt. Encrypt. Great. So that's less encrypt. Cynthia. Cynthia is still there. She knows the. Okay. All right. Now, the first step is to what? Install an EPL, EPL release repository. All right. So let's let's get started, guys. So I'll just copy this guy. Even without copying, let me just let me just uh, let me do something. Let me install those guys. Um, yum, install. Epel, Epel release is an is a repository. Let me just go back to my home. Say yum install, Epel release, Epel release, and let me start. Let me check if it's available. It's not available. Epel release asteris. <laughs> Is not available. Mm. Let me check because this is Amazon Linux. Amazon. Um. Fuck. Wait to wait. To, wait for guys. This is two thousand and three. I don't have this challenge you. Uh, because this EPL release comes with uh, the start board comes with EPL release. But let me let me go let me go ahead. Shall. Let me install Yum Utils. Let me see if I can get out Yum Utils. Yum install Yum Utils. Okay. I've, I've installed Yum Utils. Uh next, install a mode. You've already installed this guy, mode underscore SSL. All right. Which you've done. Um, I, I may need to download that EPL release. All right, let me try to install this guy if he's available. But I'm, I'm I doubt. Let me copy it. I doubt. I doubt if it's available. It's not available. It's not available. Uh, okay, sorry. Sudo. It's not available. No such file. Sorry. Move that Y, please. All right. No such file because this, this file comes from EPL release. So this is what I will do. I'm going to download EPL release. So watch guys, I'll go to Google. I'll go to Google and I will say um, EPL release Amazon Linux, Amazon Linux, all right? So turn on EPL repository for EC2 instances. So I need to turn on this, this repository. So the EPL repository is, 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 a, is a repository that has some special packages, all right? So I want to turn it on for um, Amazon Linux. But my it's like my version of Amazon Linux is not Amazon Linux 2. It's like it's Amazon Linux 2003. Let's check, Asteris release. So you can see Amazon Linux release 2023, all right? So I have to look for an email that is compatible with what? 2023. Let me check this guy. Can we install EPL on Amazon? The answer is no. Oh, we cannot add EPL repository in the latest because unlike Amazon Linux 2, which is based on CentOS and has a high level of compatibility with its packages, this guy doesn't offer that. Damn. Let me just try something. I think I had this uh, challenge sometime. 
because this thing will require us now to use a new machine, which is going to be a fault, man. It's going to be a fault, guys. Ah, Amazon Linux doesn't support EPL. Oh, father. Ah, 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 ah. So on Man Amazon Linux 2, we're, we're supposed to just install this guy. So guys, going forward, man, going forward, all right? When you're using uh, Amazon Linux, make sure it is Amazon Linux 2 and not 2000, uh, 2023. It's going to be a whole lot of work, guys. Um, damn. What do we do, guys? But let's let's do it. Are we ready for this game? All right. Hello, guys. Yeah, we're ready. Correct. Let's 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 do it, guys. Let's do it. So this is what I'll do. I'll just create a new machine. So I'll create a new machine. Um, or reload. Fuck, oh, man. Um, dev. Let me just stick to this dev. I'll create a new machine. So this now will be based on less encrypt. So um, okay. Okay, let me just end this other session now. self science certificates. So that the next one that comes will be purely less encrypted. So I don't, I don't mix it up. What do you think, guys? So don't mix it up. Stop recording. So...